Hi, my name is Tyler McGarity. I'm the Technical Account Manager for Geospatial Experts, and I'm going to show you a couple of new features we've added to the Form Editor. Uh, here I am in GeoJot Core. Uh, that's where your Form Editor is, where you can create the forms you send out to your field users. Uh, if I click on Form Editor here, I'm going to add a few fields. And you can see here, along with the required and allow typing that have always been there, there is now a retain value as well as an auto increment. Uh, that allows you to do some different things to the fields within the form. Uh, the auto increment allows you to set a number that will uh, auto increment one up every time you take a picture. And the retain values, we used to have that in the app for the entire form. Now you can set it up for individual uh, fields within the form, which makes it a little bit more of a robust tool. Uh, you can also check the box up here at the top if you wanted to retain values for everything. So the first thing I'll show you is the uh, auto increment. So in that case, if my first field was number, um, I wanted to make it required. I don't want to allow typing on it. I'm going to say auto increment. I'm going to set a default value of zero. The auto increment is going to go up by one uh, every time a picture is taken, but it will also go up by one from whatever number is placed in here as the starting value. So if I wanted my starting value to be five, uh, I would need to set the default to four. Then the first picture would be set as five. Uh, the description, that's a, another thing here where you can put in the description of the field itself. So uh, I can say, the number of the photo. That appears in both of the app and in core when people are processing it on the data editor tab. Uh, I can also put instructions in here. So if I wanted to say, uh, you know, scan the barcode on the back of the sign, if it was a barcode field, uh, I could do that right here as well. And uh, that would appear in the app. So then you can put in some instructions for your field users if it's about specific kinds of assets or data collection that's needed. Uh, the next one I'll do is the retain values. So uh, let's say that this is inspector name, and I have uh, Tyler, and Jim, and Bill, and Mary. Uh, I only have four inspectors, so I'm not going to need to allow typing. I am going to make it required, but I'm going to say retain value there. And then I'm going to tell the inspector, select your name from the drop-down list. Uh, what this will do is the inspector can pick their name once. I can pick Tyler. And then for every ensuing picture I take, I'm not going to have to select that from the field. It's going to go ahead and already uh, have that value populated. So it saves you some time uh, when you have retained values on common fields because the person can set it once and then they can move on. It, it may be a location, it may be uh, the name of somebody, it may be the type of asset. Uh, they don't have to select that from the dropdown every time. They can have retained value on for that field and then they can only select the value once. Uh, and my third field here, I'm gonna do building type. And let's say that uh, I may be a house or a shed or a garage. Um, I'm going to tell the person, select the building type. But I know most of the time it's house. So I'm going to set that as the default value. Uh, that means that unless it's something other than a house, they're not going to have to change uh, the drop down list at all. Um, I will make that field required. I'm also going to allow typing. So if it's not a house, shed, or garage, uh, maybe it's a, a different type of structure. Uh, they can manually enter that and it will be added to the form as well. Uh, so now once I've made this form, I can uh, save it. I'll say save. I'm going to call this inspector1 G seal. Save that. Um, now I can take that saved G seal. I can put it in a shared cloud folder and send it out to uh, my users that way. I can also attach it to an email. From within core here, it will attach the G seal uh, to your email from your default email client, and it will let you send that out. Uh, you can send it to a listserv. You can send it to individual users. In my case, I'm going to send it out to my Gmail account because that's what my mobile device is associated with, and I can send that off, and away it goes. Um, 
and I'll show you here what it looks like on the mobile device. So here is my mobile device. If I look here, my email just came in. Oh, let me get that back to up and down. I'm using a reflector here to display this mobile device. Uh, you can see here my email that came in. I can pick my G seal. It'll ask me to add it to GeoJot. I can say yes. It's saved that form. Now when I go into GeoJot, it's going to uh, default to the camera screen as it does now in uh, Android devices and you can see it's already on Inspector 1 as the form. Whatever was the last added form is, uh, is what it will default on. If I needed to change forms I could just go slide in from the right, go to forms. Uh, once I take that picture you can see here the number I set it as zero, it auto incremented so this is photo number one. I can say my inspector name is Tyler, uh, my building type is a house, I can say done, move on to the next picture. Now when I take the next picture, it's going to uh, auto increment the number to two. It retained my name, inspector name Tyler, and building type house. So if this was a different, I could change it, uh, or I could leave it as the default. So that's pretty much all the person has to do uh, to keep uh, going through each photo and having it keep that information. Now another place where you can do it is here if you go into the actual forms. Uh, let's say here uh, I want to edit my form in the field. I can hold down on this. I can say edit. Uh, I can edit the form name here if I needed to change it. But what I really want to do is come in here and say oh, okay on my building type you know I it's it's a house because I have 40 houses in a row uh, so I have that as a as a default value, but maybe uh, I'm doing something else now. Instead, I'm going to go and do uh, garages, but because I have house set as the default value, uh, it'll appear every time like that. So I can do one of two things. I can say change this to garage, the default value, which uh, you know I could do out in the field, or I could click my retain values button. If I click my retain values button, and you can do this for any of the fields, then when I go back to my camera and take a picture, uh, okay, number three, Tyler, now I'm switching to garages, so I'm going to switch that over to garage. I'm going to say done. And when I take the next photo, it's going to now be using the retain values to garage. So even though the default value that you set for that field is house, uh, because retain values is turned on, it's going to retain whatever the last entry was. Uh, this gives you uh, an idea of how you can use both the auto increment and retain value fields in our forms uh, when you're out there in the field collecting data. Uh, thank you very much, and if you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can reach me uh, at tyler at geospatialexperts.com, uh, or you can send a general email in to info at, at geospatialexperts.com. Thank you.